morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Chetan Parekh. I'm the senior partner at CEDA. Uh, great to see all of you here. And uh, I would take you through uh, what we see as next generation banking. Now, Oman, as many of you know, has a very, very unique uh, population, cultural values, ecosystem, which is very different. Uh, though you neighbor a very large border with UAE, the ethos and things which happen there is very different. And a lot of time we've done parallels to what Oman can truly compare with, right? So there are many geographies uh, in GCC itself. Saudi is one geography where similar ecosystem, similar family system, and a lot of consumer behavior and similar nature. And today what we are showing you is of course our view on how we see Oman going forward in the next three to five years. So as we see, there are four major things uh, which would change. Uh, first and foremost is the digital banking. All of us know internet banking moved to mobile. Most Omani banks go, went through almost 300 to 400% growth on mobile. So it's time now for the next generation of digital, and we'll show you that. Payments, payments have been an area of deep interest at Oman. I'll show you some very clear market data which shows a huge amount of payment growth which is happening in the industry. So time has now come for the next generation of payments on instant payments. Uh, if anybody has to guess, open banking uh, clearly is next thing. Uh, as all of you know, Saudi issued a circular last week. Bahrain has been on open banking for four years now, and they are now into the next generation of growth. And UK and Nordics, which started the open banking, today have 200 plus APIs running between the banks, and customer has the right to choose. So that's where central banks will push you towards in coming years. But last but not the least, as Ram mentioned, uh, Metaverse is coming. And if anybody thought Metaverse for your kids to play games, uh, you would see today very, very interesting POCs, uh, which Rajesh will show you later in the day. But Metaverse is something which is coming in in a big way as well. And it's a virtual world where people live, shop, and see. So moving further, can you just go next, please? It's not working. Yeah, thanks. So digital banking, when you say, I think there are three types of digital bank one should appreciate. And there is no one model which is great. The first one is neobanks. Neobanks are fundamentally built uh, for digital. So you can't find their branches. Uh, you typically see them being expanded from a mother bank with a different brand, different appeal, a set of simple products. That's typically what we see as a neobank. Then there is challenger bank. Challenger bank are typically licensed. And there's a history both in UAE, UK, whenever the challenger bank gets licensed, right? They would come in as a digital bank, a different experience, different service. Right, so you can see meme. In fact, I had designed meme in 2012, and it went live in Saudi Arabia in 2016, in Bahrain in 2018. So it provided for first time an Apple store kind of a store instead of a branch. Right, so same thing, YO has just been launched in UAE by Atisalat and a couple of uh, investors. Again, they started with corporate digital first. So if anybody believes corporate cannot be done without an RM. Vio is doing a completely cloud-based corporate bank and all relationship and trade completely digitally. So that's where challenger banks are coming. Zand again is coming with a platform bank. Zand is launching this quarter. And again, it's, these are all fully licensed banks. Moving to payments bank. Now, Oman has been a very early adopters of payments. Central bank here allowed mobile-based payments many years before UAE, if anybody knows. So payments is, again, a separate entity. And Oman introduced a license in 2020. So today, payments in itself separately can become a fintech-led proposition. So moving further, when you look at the business models, right? So while a traditional bank has nothing to lose, there is a whole new market. Oman is one unique country where there is almost 50% plus younger population. They're all going to come and join banking system. They're all going to join the work system. So they opening account 
and their experience would be fundamentally different. So you look at the traditional bank who is extending to digital, and that's something which is must do. But traditional bank having a full digital arm. ELA, which is a case study. Uh, if anybody of you know Bahrain Bank ABC, uh, which is largely a wholesale bank, wanted to enter retail. And they opened ELA. ELA introduced for the first time some of the products which in our world we were using. And today, ELA is expanding in 13 countries. And they're so successful, they have a 5 million payments on ELA today. Right? And the CASA balance, which is a primary objective of the bank ABC, is fully achieved. They are a 2 billion in size already within 18 months. And they opened during COVID. Same way, Pure Play Digital Bank, again, they have their own unique space. Uh, digital banks are going to be the future of most of the markets because younger generation wants faster, quicker, a customer experience, which is very unique. Now, when you look at uh, who are the vendors who are participating in this ecosystem, again, if you see the deals, highest number of deals, if anybody can see, is in COVID year. Right? So COVID has, of course, accelerated this. And right from all the leading names, a uh, significant amount of deal in the market. Moving further, if you look at the digital banking play across. Now, one thing which clearly stands out, and we have a unique index which measures what's the readiness of country for digital banking. So if you look at UAE, uh, 10 plus digital banks opened over the last 24 to 36 months. Some of these banks are really large. UAE today has 2 million customers who are on pure play digital platforms among these 10 platforms. So that's the size. There is a study which NEO, which started as one of the first digital banks in UAE, the chairman had promised they will shut their branches down. Today, Mashrak has only seven branches in UAE. They used to have 44, 18 months back. So it's not only moved, it is significantly a cost and income ratio driver as well. What you will see in Oman and Qatar, these two markets, there's a white space. One regulator has to move to announce banking license or at least allow digital arms. But more importantly, banks have to approach regulator. We understand there are a couple of proposals in discussion right now, but that's, that's where clearly an opportunity when we see that readiness exists. You have a KYC framework which can be made available, but just a regulatory license and a bank's eagerness to move in. Uh, once launched, these businesses grow to quarter million to half a million within 24 months. So profitability is never a challenge for a digital bank once it's launched. Typical launching time is in the range of nine to 12 months. When you start, get an approval, put up your systems. The key fundamental difference is customer experience. So if you look at Oman, 5.4 million population, bankable, significant number. There's a large amount of Omanis who's going to come into banking system and a very, very strong preference for mobile. So clear mobile first is a way forward which we see. If you look at government initiative, government has already had a 2014 plan and they are going towards it. HSBC and some of the global banks are pushing for digital. Mobile first strategies themselves, CBO, have their own fintech hub which is pushing for it's now in second avatar, and regulation change. So Oman is slowly changing its regulation. Payment part has been sorted. We're now seeing banking part to change. Now, when you look at the digital banks, I think there are multiple models, as I explained. Wyo decided to change experience. They are fully digital now on corporate and retail. But interesting one is Yap. Now, Oman has a mass market. Yap is one fintech invested by some young Emiratis which partnered with a bank called Rack Bank, which is one of the popular banks in UAE from retail perspective. And Yap has introduced a mobile bank full-fledged with payments, accounts, and cards. Now, they're so successful that the new CEO is taking Yap to nine markets, but of course, exclusive tie-up in each market. Similarly, STC Pay, ELA, ELA is looking for partners who can take the franchise. 
So all of these banks are open. If Oman wants to embrace the technology and the brands and experience, all of these banks are open. And it's Revolut who's coming in 26 markets. Revolut has made an application to six GCC com countries. If Revolut is allowed, it'll become one of the first digital bank in this part of the world with the foreign ownership. So that's the level of power. Now, second area, which is payments. As all of you know, payment has been a deep focus for Oman. Uh, Oman was one of the first to introduce many of the payment initiative. B2B payments is a major focus. Now, that's a global challenge. Uh, globally convincing business to adopt digital has been a challenge. But that has changed over the last 24 months, thanks to significant amount of COVID impact and owners and CFOs now accepting digital first. So MasterCard has again introduced with HSBC B2B payments in this part of the world. B2C is still, uh, it was nascent growth, but now it's in a mid-growth pace. So if you look at the volumes, right, you will see in the corporate side, the volume growth is still lower. B2C has a very large natural volume growth because customer wants digital. But B2B is where you have to push. You have to come up with a solution around payments. And when we're saying payments, we're also meaning collections. If you are giving a collection solution as a transaction banker, that's again comes under the B2B growth. Again, when you look at the market, uh, if anybody believe Oman is a small market and it's not really big in terms of payments, uh, quite a significant growth in Oman market, uh, acquiring, issuing both sides, and compared to global, right? So it's now picking up on the transaction volumes also. If you look at the volumes, 5 million payments in 2021 and 28 million expected by, so see the growth. It's going to be 4X or 5X growth, right? So it's a CAGR, which is very, very healthy in payments business. So it's a big fee income opportunity for Oman market. In nutshell, what do you need for a success is a collaboration with either a fintech or your own technology team to bring in payment solutions along with your associations, MasterCard, Visa, all of them have seen this association based launches in other markets. Converge payments, payment as a service, again, is coming in a big way. So both banking as a service and a payment as a service runs off a cloud. You have a only subscription investment. You're not investing in technology, nothing. You're consuming a payment as a service. YAP is a classic example of a payment as a service. Increase uptake on AI and machine learning. Again, most of the payments, STP is going to be focused around with AI routines and significant amount of APIs which you can bring to the market. When Central Bank will come with a circular end of this year or early next year, it's likely to be putting a roadmap for six to nine months. So are you ready for that open API? See the number of fintechs. If anybody believed that there was no fintechs here, there are 12 established fintechs who are in different stages of tie-ups in only payments area. So it's one area which is very, very widely expanded in Oman market. And again, there are huge amount of opportunities, both B2B and B2C. Some of them are in room today as well. What's coming in is open banking and APIs, which is getting introduced. For open banking, your bank needs to modernize its core banking system because you need to provide the payment APIs and significant scalability, as well as invest into open API stack, which includes an API manager and so on and so forth. So again, if you see what Omani banks will do five years down or 10 years down, you would manufacture the products but they will be consumed using open API by the businesses. So that's the power of open API. Focus how you can cut, put your customer accounts, different assets on the open API framework. Again, it's both ways. Some of the early movers gets benefits, but regulator will make it a level playing field for open banking. You can see CBO has been quite active They've going down a path with 2020, they've into, introduced the payment licenses. And now 2022, they have incubators in the second avatar. And vision is to make Oman a cashless economy from a completely cash-based economy five to seven years back. So if you look at the global situation, what can differentiate you? There's a lot to learn from UK, which introduced PSD2. 
alliances made a big difference so if you have your corporate alliances with your partners then they can become a huge benefit in open api example lulu is partnering with one of the leading banks to open lulu bank banking cards accounts everything in other markets this will likely to come to oman as well it's a very very good franchise in oman so who moves in first with an alliance mobile apps again what kind of fintech based mobile apps you can introduce for consumer consumption to acquisition banking as a platform do you want to bring in a banking as a platform kyc automation again oman has a unique challenge on kyc how do we solve it with a digital uae is a classic example monzo is another big example where they've sold they've solved through the kyc automation and again lot of incubators around oman already central bank runs one and there are other private organizations we are putting up as well so when you look at the gcc market uh, i think one of the clear market which is similar to you is saudi arabia um, and saudi arabia has given three banking licenses last year all three digital banks are launched in the fourth quarter this year oman is yet to launch and that's that's where the opportunity is coming from from equal market perspective now what can you do with open banking if you see dbs introduced open api for financial assets uh subai or used for credit worthiness so your whole credit application barclays has been one of the oldest investor for open apis they invested a billion dollars in digitization in open api programs fidor has launched a challenger bank uh i don't know how many of you know fidor now owned by sopra fidor was a fintech out of germany opened a challenger bank in uk and then license the platform as a banking as a service to different markets yes bank uh, one of the fastest growing bank in india had built the whole business model before it went into a financial crisis it had built a business model on which paytm and phone pay were running as a services and australian banks are not behind they are likely to be the typically legacy focused guys who are moving in with open big banking api layers so if you look at again the fourth thing which is going to happen into the market is metaverse now let's let's understand what is metaverse so metaverse is a virtual world a 3d virtual world where people will shop play consume services and banking is one of the key services so at some point central bank would allow you to go into the metaverse question is again are you ready and it rides on the open banking apis is more rajesh will speak later today to give us more how he has done it now what are the elements of the metaverse now as all of you know globally digital currencies are coming so digital currency cbdc is going to become one of the drivers uae launches its currency the next year in 2023 oman would be again in 24 25 so once digital currency comes in avatars and nlp processing engines are there metaverse can do wonders and you will see many of these elements being shown today now one realizes why would i like to invest your natural business is growing at 5% 10% 15% metaverse is growing at 29 so that's the growth so if you're looking for a growth on customer volumes transaction volumes that's the growth we are looking at and see what people are using if anybody believes metaverse is not used by banks metaverse has a huge amount of huge cases today employee training has moved on to metaverse onboarding of employees is moved to metaverse and information and brand building building your virtual brand virtual branch virtual headquarters these are some of the use cases most banks have done i like to show you some of the players here kia.ai is going to speak today and they are going to show you the product as well but if you look at a uh, cookmin bank in south korea so they have launched a virtual bank with a virtual rm bank of america is using for 4300 financial center for wealth center so they replaced wealth rm with the help of metaverse jp morgan again a wholesale payments in metaverse bnp paribas introduced a mobile app so if anybody believes that you need virtual reality devices only no you can use your mobile you can use your email 3d impact may not be that much but vr is not the only way you can consume last but not the least people have built headquarters in metaverse siam bank 
build their headquarters in metaverse so very much a reality and this is coming in and a warm welcome to all of you thank you so much for listening in